What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. I am super excited. I have some new goodies from Dior to show you guys today. I'm going to be reviewing the new Dior Forever Glow Star Filter. We are going to be taking a look at that, and we will also be taking a look at two of the new Dior Forever bronzers. These are limited edition for spring, summer 2024. There is going to be swatches. I have daylight applications, guys, and of course, lots of helpful comparisons. So if you are interested in any of these products and you want to hear my completely honest thoughts, then keep watching. All right, friends, we're going to kick things off with the Dior Forever Glow Star Filter. This is basically Dior's version of a multi-purpose glowy product that we see from so many brands these days, both drugstore and luxury. This one is going to have a luxury price point at $55, and it does come in 10 shades, which I was pretty impressed by. Good job, Dior. I have shade number one. This is going to be the one that is best for my skin tone. And on the Dior website, this is described as a skincare makeup hybrid that delivers 24 hours of hydration. It visibly brightens, smooths, and blurs the skin for a complexion that is more radiant than ever. And as I mentioned, friends, this is going to be very multi-purpose. So you can wear it a couple different ways. I'll try my best to demonstrate those today. You can wear it on its own as kind of like a no makeup makeup look to try and, you know, blur and brighten your face. You can wear it as a primer. You can also mix it into your foundation, whether it be, you know, a Dior foundation or any other foundation. And you can also use it as a liquid highlighter, maybe on like the high points of the cheeks and other parts of the face. So it's a good multi-purpose product. In terms of the packaging, Dior once again has come through. It is absolutely gorgeous, very weighty, very luxury. It comes in this beautiful glass bottle and it does have a pump, which honestly, guys, I prefer the pump or like a squeezy tube compared to some of the doe foot applicators that we're seeing. This has a 12 month shelf life. It is made in France. I also want to call out guys. Yes, it does have quite a bit of fragrance. If you've ever tried pretty much any of the Dior skincare or like their base makeup, everything has fragrance in it. It doesn't linger for me. I don't smell it like a minute later, but I do want to call that out guys. Taking a look at the ingredients here, this has iris extract, which I did look it up. It says here it reduces the depth of wrinkles, improves skin hydration and elasticity for an overall improvement of skin tone. So that's kind of like the star ingredient in this. There's also a lot of moisturizing ingredients in here. I'm seeing vitamin E, I'm seeing glycerin, some other humectants. So they are definitely going for like a skincare makeup hybrid with this product. By the way, if you are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Sophia and I help you shop for luxury. I am so passionate about luxury beauty and fashion. I review a lot of new luxury beauty here on my channel. I make fun and helpful guides. So if you love luxury beauty, hit that subscribe button to join our fam. We would love to have you. And as a quick reminder, friends, I know these products, they're popping up at different retailers. I'm going to have a shopping guide. All the links are going to be in the description box, along with all the makeup on my face, the brushes that I use, etc. Do know that I use affiliate links. So shopping through my links earns me a small commission, which supports my channel. Thank you so, so much. And with that, let's get on to the rest of this review. And without further ado, friends, let's get this product on my face. I know you guys have been waiting for this. I will do kind of like a side by side and then, you know, we'll try and layer some foundation on top and everything. But before I do that, I want to show you guys a quick side by side of the backs of my hands. On the right side, that hand has the Glow Star filter and then the hand on the left has nothing. I know sometimes when I put it on my face, it can be a little bit hard to tell. This is in natural light. So you can see that the right hand, it's just a little bit more perfected. It's more blurred. It's glowy. Definitely packs a punch. Okay. <laughs> Definitely packs a punch, but I want to show it obviously on my face as well. It is not the runniest, but also not the thickest formula. It definitely feels kind of like foundation, kind of like a very moisturizing foundation, not too serum-y which I prefer because that means we get a little bit more pigment. And I think that the shade one is good for me. It has a very neutral tone to it. I don't have anything else on my face, guys, except my skincare. I went in with my creme de la mer. I went in with a little bit of sunscreen. I'm filming in natural light, by the way, so hopefully you guys can see it well enough. So you kind of get like that sheen, you get a little bit of a blur and it does feel very hydrating and I don't really smell it all that much now that it's on my face. So this is with the Glow Star filter and then this is with nothing. I can definitely tell the difference, but comment down below. Let me know what you think. Do you think this was a good color for me? I also, with these products, I like to take a little bit and I kind of just like dab it here along my under eyes to number one, hydrate that area before I go in with my concealer, but also I feel like it brightens that up a little bit. Now I'm gonna put the Glow Star filter on the other half of my face. And so you can kind of see there from the streaks that like super creamy texture. It's not sticky though, I will say. All right, so here it is all over my face. 
I feel like I look better already. You guys comment down below and let me know what you think. It could be more pigmented, but it definitely just kind of instantly brightened everything. Now I'm gonna layer a little bit of foundation on top so you guys can see kind of the full effect or we'll kind of mix it in a little bit so you can see even more of a glow. On the Dior website, they recommended using this product with the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation, which I happen to have, and this is in shade 0N. So we're gonna test this out, guys. So right here I have the foundation. Here is the filter, and I thought I would just kind of mix these here here so you can tell the difference between the foundation and the filter. Okay, so now I'm gonna mix these together and that's what we get. It definitely adds a lot. If you don't want a lot of glow, I would recommend using it more as like a primer and then you can put the foundation on top and kind of melt it together in that way or just, you know, use less. <laughs> that always works as well. So let's put this on this side of my face. Here is what it looks like on my face with the foundation and the Glow Star filter mixed in, and then nothing on this side. I think it's pretty apparent, but comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna get the rest of the foundation on my face and I will be right back. All right, friends, so this is the finished complexion with the foundation. I put on some concealer, I did my brows off camera, and I think it looks really good. It has some really nice coverage, but also just like a beautiful radiance from the Glow Star Filter. It's kind of blurring a little bit more of my redness than if I had just gone in with the foundation on its own. I am going to return back to the Glow Star Filter a little bit later in this video after we do the bronzers so you guys can see what it looks like as a liquid highlighter, okay? But before we move on to the rest of the review, guys, I do wanna do some quick comparisons with some other popular and very similar products that are in my collection. And in each of these comparisons, friends, I'm gonna have the Dior filter on the left and then the swatch of the comparison product on the right. And we're gonna kick things off with one of my all-time favorites, the RMS Super Natural Radiant Serum. This is in the lightest shade, Light Aura. Clearly, the color is very different. The RMS is more of like that pinky tone. Really, really great if you have a fair and also cooler toned complexion. I know with Dior, a lot of their products, they do run quite warm. So I just want to call that out. Unfortunately, with the RMS, they only have three shades and the Dior has 10. So that's also something to consider. I think in terms of the formula, I mean, in addition to the RMS having sunscreen in it, it's a little bit thicker. It's a little bit more pigmented. That is the product that I really go to if I'm having a true like no makeup makeup day and I want want a lot of radiance. I think it does a really good job concealing the discoloration that I have underneath my eyes and also on the tops of my cheeks. And I will probably go more towards this one on those days where I want just a little bit more brightness. And also if I'm not gonna be wearing any type of makeup at all. I think both of them are equally as moisturizing, but the RMS is just like a little bit thicker. Like it grips the skin a little bit better. I think it's a little bit longer lasting. I think that the Dior is maybe a little bit easier to mix into foundations, but honestly, I don't know, I do that with the RMS as well. They're both really good products. I would just consider, you know, do you want sunscreen? Do you like that sort of really light, cool toned pink tone that you get from the RMS? Or do you want something that is a little bit more like golden than I would go for the Dior? Next, we have a cult favorite from Chanel. This is the Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Illuminating Fluid, and this is in the shade Early Glow. This also, the tones are very different, but also you can see that the finish is different as well. The Chanel one is more sparkly. It has more of like a, like a glittery cast to it. It's a beautiful product, but it definitely has more of like that pearly nature to it. Whereas I feel like the Dior formula kind of um, melts into the skin a little bit more. I will be honest, guys, I like the Dior better than the Chanel. I know, I like the Chanel a lot, but I like that the Dior is very, very moisturizing, just has a little bit more of like a skincare feel to it. The Chanel, I normally will use this as something that I mix into a foundation to make it a little bit brighter, maybe even a little bit lighter if I bought something that was, you know, kind of like a little bit too golden or yellow. They're both really great, but I like the Dior because it has a little bit more pigment and kind of blends into the skin slightly more seamlessly for me. Next, we have kind of more of an indie brand. This is the Auric Glow Lust, and I have the shade Selenite. 
night. The Auric Glowlust is such a cool product. This is definitely like the thickest and the most pigmented of all the glowy products that I'm showing you today in these comparisons. If you really want a lot of pigment, if you want something that you can kind of sheer out but also build up, I recommend this one. If you really want to use this almost as like a no makeup makeup concealer, the Aura Glow Lust is going to give you the coverage that you want. I also think this one is very, very moisturizing. And I think what Auric does a good job with is giving us different undertones to the shades. Like some of the shades are very golden or very pink. So if you have trouble finding your perfect undertone in some of these more mainstream brands like Dior, I would consider checking out the Auric. The Dior is going to be a little bit, not it's not runny, but it's not going to be as thick as the Auric and it's not going to be as shiny as as the Auric. Hopefully you guys can tell from those swatch comparisons. You know guys, I could not find my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I have a little mini of it somewhere and I know it's in one of my travel bags, but you know what I do have? I have the e.l.f. Halo Glow. And if you guys watch my other video where I basically compared all of these products that I'm talking about right now, I did a whole glowy product skin guide. So I can link that down below if you wanna check that out for more recommendations. When I did that video, I told you I could not tell the difference between the e.l.f. and the Charlotte Tilbury so the e.l.f. is a really good dupe. So I've got the e.l.f. today, okay, to compare with the Dior here in the swatch comparisons. And what I found here is that the e.l.f. is a little bit shinier. I think that the Dior feels a little bit more moisturizing. I think that it feels a little bit more luxe on the skin. I think the pigmentation is similar. Like I said, the e.l.f. is a little bit shinier. And I think another big thing to consider is just the packaging. The e.l.f. Halo Glow and the Charlotte Tilbury filter, they both come in those taller bottles with the doe foot applicator. It's not really my favorite. I prefer a pump bottle. If I really want to get a lot of product out, if I'm mixing it into a foundation, I rather go with the Dior. The Charlotte Tilbury and the e.l.f., I typically use those more so when I'm actually doing more of like a liquid highlighter type of situation. So I don't reach for them as much as I do these other ones that come in pump bottles. Next up, I have a comparison with a recent release from Chanel. This is the Le Beige Healthy Glow Primer in the shade Light Copper. This was one of the limited edition primers that came out with their Winter Glow collection. And I know I'm gonna get questions about it, so I wanted to show you guys a comparison. These Chanel primers, they are definitely more so a primer. They're not very pigmented. It's more like a hydrating serum with a little bit of glow mixed in. Personally, although I enjoy these primers, especially in the winter time when I want a lot of extra moisture, I reach for products like the Dior a lot more often than this because I already go in with my skincare. And then if I'm gonna go in with an extra product, I kind of want something that's gonna add a little bit more pigment so it's actually more noticeable. I wouldn't really use the Chanel one to mix in with the foundation. I definitely wouldn't use it as a highlighter. So hopefully you guys can see right there, it's just a lot lighter and when you blend it in, it's more transparent on the skin. And lastly, friends, very similar to the Chanel, I have the Say Glowy Super Gel and this is in the shade Star Glow. Basically the same concept as the Chanel. It's more of like that juicy, more serum-like type of skincare product that has a little bit of glow in it. So if you are just really going for like that added moisture so that you can get your foundation, you know, laying on your skin very smoothly, kind of spreads across the face nicely, but it still adds a little bit of, you know, glow glowiness, then I would go with this. But once again, like I said, I prefer the Dior. Next up, we are getting into the bronzers. These are the Dior Forever Natural Bronze Glow. These are limited edition for spring, summer 2024. They come in four shades. I have the two lightest shades and on Selfridges right now, they're retailing for $58. That's where I purchased these. However, these will be available soon on the US website. Check down below for the links because by the time you guys watch this, they might already be available. I think they're probably going to be more like 60 to $65. We shall see. And you guys know Dior already has the Dior Forever bronzer line. I have a bunch of different comparisons and bronzer rankings if you guys want to learn more about those. These are a limited edition version. So what's different about these, you guys can see kind of in the close-ups here, is that they have mixed together a couple of different pigments. It's just not pure bronzer. So we have here a satiny bronzing powder, a matte sculpting powder, a vibrant blush, and an illuminating powder infused with flashes of gold like the rays of sunlight. We'll get into swatches in just a second, but I need to show you guys before we do that, the absolutely stunning packaging. Dior continues to outdo itself with the packaging of these summer collections each year. I wanted to show you guys, I have the one from last summer, which I thought that this was cute in and of itself. Then 
they gave us this one, okay? So what we have here is the traditional canage quilting and it is almost like embroidered into the compact. It's so good, guys. And then we have the Christian Dior logo and the logo is kind of like, it's like this metally type of feel. It's very luxe. I really like it. Not gonna lie, not gonna lie. I was, I was very tempted by the packaging. I think it's even better than the one that they did last year. And then real quick, friends, these have a 12 month shelf life. They are talc free. They also have fragrance, okay? Just like all the other products from Dior and they are made in France. Diving into the shades that I picked up here, friends, I have number 031 coral bronze and number 032 pink bronze. You're probably wondering what is the difference between these two? So I'm gonna show you guys some close-ups and some swatches. Let's start off with swatches of just the bronzing powder, like the base powder that we have right here. You guys will see there's really not that much of a difference between the two. I really thought that the pink one was going to be maybe like cooler in tone. The bronzer part, I think it's pretty much the same. If you take a look at the four bronzers in total, I think what Dior did is that the lighter two are basically the same tone. And then the darker two are also the same tone, but they're just like for a little bit of a deeper complexion. So keep that in mind. If you were really trying to decide between the two, there's really no difference in terms of the depth. I also wanted to show you guys swatches of the highlighting powder that is in the center right there. That is the glowy part of these bronzers. I think you can tell here from the swatches, you get quite a bit of glow there. So you're gonna see that in the demo. These do pack a punch. They have a bit of like shimmer to them, almost like the Glow Star filter, but in like a powder version. And then finally, guys, I'm sure what you've been waiting for, these are side-by-side -side swatches of all the powders in here mixed together. There is a subtle difference, okay? And I definitely think I see the difference more so on the face, actually, than here on the hand when I kind of swirl everything together. So with that, guys, let's get into the demo. I will do a side-by-side, -side, and you can let me know what you think. All right, the moment of truth, guys. What is the difference between these bronzers? We are going to get these on my face. Let me just get my brush. We're going to start things off with the coral glow. And what I will say right off the bat, guys, okay, and you guys were right. A lot of you warned me about this. These are very warm. They're very warm, and I think you need to think about these a little bit more so as like a blush, a corally warm blush, because if you put this all over the face, it's gonna be pretty glowy and it's gonna be pretty warm, I think, for a lot of you out there. So I'm gonna get a decent little amount here on my brush, and I'm just gonna do like a very low light dusting across the cheek. I didn't put on any other kind of like powder on my face. So I usually like to do a little bit on the cheek there and then a little bit up here. What I like about these guys is that you really can see the sheen from the highlighting powder. And that's another reason why I don't know if I would like go ham all over the face with these bronzers. I definitely wouldn't use them as like a contour. I know a lot of you like to do it in like the hollows of your cheeks. I wouldn't do that. I would use Use these like a blush. I think that is what these are best suited for. See that like really nice glowiness that I'm getting right there? Let me blend it in. I do have a bit of the dewy base from the foundation that we applied earlier. All right, so this is the coral bronze. You guys can kind of see that coralness that it gives. Hopefully you can see the illumination that you get as well. It's more like a glowy neutral blush with a bit of like a coral undertone to it. I don't know if I would like really blend it in with the rest of my face. I like to wear these as a blush. And I definitely think if you go in with a brush more so like this, a smaller one, this is the BK Beauty N17 a good brush. I love this. I need to get like three more of them. If you go in with something like this, you can really pick up more of that pigment and you also could pick up more of like the glowy part and you can build that up. And that's when I notice the difference between the blushes a little bit more. It is subtle, but it's when I go in with something like that. Let me show you here. I've got the refer number 20. This is really great as well for kind of getting into that little area right there. And then you can just kind of like, dust it across the face. I also love to use these types of products as eyeshadow because you do get multiple finishes in one compact. So I will do my eyes with this real quick so you guys can see. It'll end up really tying everything together is something like very monochromatic. I'm dipping my brush into the little coral part right there. And I mean, it's, it's 
subtle, right? It's a powder. It's not going to be like a uh, Natasha Denona shadow or anything like that. It's not going to be like a satin formula necessarily, but it is going to, you know, add some nice pigment. I'm going to take a little bit right here. And then I will probably go into the shinier part there and just kind of work that here onto the outer part of the eye. And here is the pink bronze. Let's go into this one. Get that on the cheeks. So you can kind of see this one's slightly pinker, but it's subtle. It's subtle, guys. It's not enough to say that you should get both. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that it's like so different because it's not. Going in with that BK Beauty brush again and kind of focusing there on the pink. See how that kind of added a little bit of blush? So depending on the brushes that you have, you could, you know, focus a little bit more on the bronzer side or swirl it around. And then you could take one of these, go in, kind of add a little bit more of a blushy tone and then go in the center and add a little bit more of that highlighter. And I know it's not perfectly blended, but I just kind of want to show you guys so it's a little bit more apparent on camera. See kind of like the glow that that gives. I'm going into the pink shade with my eyeshadow brush, trying to pick up a little bit more of the pinker pigment. All right, friends, I applied some mascara, a little bit of lipstick, and here is the final look. Using both of the bronzers, let me know what you think. We definitely are just Ooh, glowing to the gods today. I don't really see enough of a difference between the two shades. I think the bigger thing to consider is if maybe these are a little bit too deep for you. I think if I was one or two shades fair, I would probably stay away from these. But if you are my skin tone to kind of maybe like more on the medium scale, I definitely think that these are gonna work and you can build them up. But I'll share more in my final thoughts, guys. Next up, we are gonna get into some comparisons with the bronzers, so hopefully you guys can kind to see maybe how these are different or similar to other ones that you guys have in your collection. So let's get into that. I have three sets of comparisons to show you all today. I tried to pick the ones that were the most relevant or perhaps the most similar. The first set that you guys see here are with the other Dior bronzers that I have in my collection. So we have 031 and 032, which I just demoed. And then we have 004 tan bronze from Dior and 003 soft bronze. You can definitely tell that the ones that I have on my face today, they are more glowy. Typically the Dior Forever bronzers, they're more of like a matte, a very like natural matte, maybe a little bit of glow type of formula. They're not going to give you like the sheen and the blurring that you're getting from the ones on my face. If you are looking for a really nice, more cool toned bronzer from Dior, get the 004. Like obviously these are very warm. If you're not looking for something warm or corally or something more of a blush, go for that 004. The 003, that I don't really use that bronzer that much anymore, okay guys? I bought it a little bit more for the packaging and for the review. I keep it for comparisons, but it is just way too orange on me. So definitely the 004, that is my go-to normally for the Dior. Next up, I have the new bronzers from YSL Beauty. So in this comparison here, you see 031 and 032 from Dior. And then you see the two YSL bronzers in the lightest two shades, 01 and 02. The YSL formula, it is lighter. It's a little bit more natural and airy, kind of blends into the face a lot differently than the ones that I'm wearing today, which are much more pigmented. Also, similar to the last comparisons, these YSL ones, they are matte. There's really no glowiness to them. Kind of wish there was, kind of wish there was a little bit more glowiness. And they also are pretty warm. They are not as warm as the Dior, but if you buy that lightest shade, the 01 guys, it is a really nice natural look, I think, for someone who is fair like me. I have a full review of these, by the way, with lots of other comparisons, so I can link that down below. However, I'm just going to say it right here because I've been getting a lot of questions, guys. None of these are cool tone. So please don't ask in the comments, which one's more cool tone? None of the ones that I'm swatching here the two in this review and the two YSL, none of them are cool toned. If you want something cool toned, go with the Dior 004 or get like the Tom Ford Terra bronzer, for example. And lastly, friends, a lot of you guys know when I first saw the promo photos for these Dior bronzers, I immediately thought of the ones from Guerlain. These are the Guerlain Terracotta Light Healthy Glow Bronzers. And it's a very similar concept where you kind of have mixed together the matte bronzer, a glowy bronzer, and a blush. They also have the exact same thing where it's like pink, and coral. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. So I was dying to do a comparison with these. So right here, friends, we have 
the 031, the 032 from Dior. And then we have the Guerlain ones in light warm, which is the peachier one, and light cool, which is the pinker one. Now, the Guerlain appeared to be a lot softer in pigmentation. It's also interesting because they swatch a little bit more orangey, whereas the Dior are more of a peach. I think that we get more pigmentation and more of a glow from the Dior ones. So I think that the Guerlain, if you know, if you're looking for something a little bit more subtle, but you still kind of like that concept of like a bronzer and blush hybrid, I would go for that. If you want more like juicy glow, like what I have right on here today, or maybe you have a deeper skin tone, then I would definitely go for the Dior. Before we get into my final thoughts, friends, I did promise you that I would use the star filter on my cheekbones so we can see what it looks like as a highlighter. So this is the last time that the headband will be going on. I'm just gonna put a little bit of the filter on the back of my hand and I'm using a BK Beauty 109 brush. And again, I only have like a very little bit, but you guys, can kind of see it does layer on top of foundation pretty nicely it's not going to be as glowy as the arc glow lust but it is very nice it really just kind of like melts into the skin so you get more of like a true highlight because the highlighting powder that's in the bronzer it's deeper right so it's not really the same thing it didn't move any of my foundation either because it's not super serum -y like the say star glow or the chanel primer for example it's a little bit thicker and creamier so there you go. All right, friends, we have made it to my final thoughts. I'm gonna let you guys know what I think is worth picking up here. Do I think that these products are worth it? Starting off with the Dior Forever Glow Star Filter. I think that this is great. I think it is a beautiful product. I think Dior did a really great job with it. Am I surprised it took Dior this long to come out with one of these? Kind of, I guess. They've been spending a lot of time reformulating the products they already have, which is a little bit annoying, but nonetheless, guys, they came out with something new and I think Think it's really good as you saw from the comparisons is this like the most unique groundbreaking product ever no there's tons of other brands that are doing very very similar products you just need to decide you know, do you have something like this in your collection already? I think it's different enough from like the Chanel primer and the Say primer, for example, those things that are a little bit more like serum-y, they're more like moisturizing primers as opposed to something that gives you more pigment. I also think that it is different enough from the Chanel Le Beige highlighting fluid. You guys saw in that comparison that the finish of those two is very different. And this one, which I do like a little bit more, as I mentioned, it is a little bit thicker and more moisturizing. So I really enjoy it as a primer and something to kind of mix into my foundation. I think it's a really great product. I also think it's kind of a good Goldilocks product where it's not the most pigmented, most thick and shiny, you know, glowy product that I have in my collection, but it also isn't the kind of thing that just sort of blends into nothingness. So overall, guys, I really, really like it. It is $55, but I feel like this is gonna last me a long time. Like one pump should be enough. One or two pumps should be enough for your face. So I feel like it's gonna last a long time. And I actually would be interested in picking out maybe a deeper shade and kind of playing around with it to see if maybe it could be used as like a bronzer or something like that. Let me know if you would be interested in me doing something like that. Now, let's move on to the bronzers. I should say the bronzers because these are more like blushes, guys. A lot of you told me, Sophia, don't get them. You warned me about them. And I definitely appreciate that, guys. But you know, I need to see things for myself. I need to test them out for you all, okay? I do agree with you guys. I don't think that these are the kinds of thing that I would like really go ham with all over my face. They are certainly, certainly very warm compared to a lot of the bronzers that are in my collection. But I do really appreciate, number one, the kind of corally undertone that I get from them. And I also really like the glow that I get from them. They're more pigmented than like the Guerlain bronzers, for example. So if you have a deeper skin tone, or maybe you just felt like, I don't know, like you can never really pick up enough pigment on your brush. You never really got enough onto your face with some of those other bronzers. Then I think you're really going to like these. For me, I look at these as like, 
like my perfect neutral summertime blush that is also a little bit glowy. I'm going to use these as blushes. What I have been enjoying doing lately in kind of my daily routine is I will go in first with the new YSL bronzer in that really light shade. I'll kind of go, you know, all over the face so I get a little bit of warmth and that's more of like my bronzer and then I go in with this almost like a beautiful bronzy glowy blush. So for me, it's worth it. I really like it. I love the packaging, but is it a must have? No. If you're looking for a bronzer specifically, if you don't have one or you used one up, this wouldn't be the first one that I would pick. You know, take a look at the comparisons. I also have a bronzer ranking, which I can link down below if you want more recommendations. You definitely don't need both. I think in general, Dior, like do better. This is not customer friendly at all as a consumer i think I, not, or I was i was very confused when i was shopping for these like what's the difference which one is lighter what is the difference in tone they really don't give helpful swatches or anything on the websites guys like it's it's a pretty bad shopping experience which is why i like to do these reviews i like the product but I think that it's a little bit deceiving. I think what they should have done is they should have actually made four shades of the bronzer and then layered in the blush and the highlighting powder. And some of them should have had a much cooler toned bronzing powder in there so that the end result wasn't always so warm because not everybody wants that. So I think that it's a bit of a fail from like a product development standpoint for Dior and how they're kind of marketing these to the consumer. But do I like it? Do I like the way that it looks? Yes, I do. So you guys have been warned. You saw what it looks like. You can let me know what you think, okay? And that is all I have for you today, friends. I hope that you enjoyed this review. I hope you had fun with me today and that it was helpful. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. It definitely helps me out. Sound off in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of these products. Did you pick them up? If you have a different skin tone than me as well, I would love to hear your thoughts. So put all of that in the comments section down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.